Hi guys. <clears throat> so we are here for another digital background exchange with Bea Grob, Shell C, and Ayala Art. Hope I pronounced that correctly. If I didn't, please correct me. Uh, anyway, so this year, as last year, we're all creating original works of art and then scanning them and turning them into something that's in a digital or printable format and exchanging them and then doing art with them. This is the one I created. And <clears throat> to be honest, it started out as a way to test um, some markers, pens, and crayons that I had in my stash. Um, I was working on maybe purging some things uh, and um, I just started making marks on a scrap piece of paper and it turned into this, this is one of four that I made. Uh, for spring 2020 and I love this one so much I scanned it and made it into some artwork the free the download of which of mine is available to you all the link is in the video description if you're watching this on your TV I know you don't have a video description you need to get on a tablet or a computer or mobile device I do believe you can find it from your phone um, you can't get the link from your computer, but the link is in the video description. So, really cool. Anyway, um, I also got these. Now this one I believe is from Ayala Art. Isn't that pretty? This one is from Bea Grob, I think. I could have these wrong, so it wouldn't surprise me. And that one I know is from Chelsea. These are not printed in any special way. I have a very old HP inkjet printer. Um, it's not a laser jet. They aren't printed on special paper. In fact, this is recycled paper. Um, this is just plain ordinary printer paper. It's nothing special. So what I wanted to do with one or more of these today is show you all how I did this. So these are some of my smaller um, watercolor palettes. This one is my floral and cobalt palette. So when I want to limit my colors that I'm working with, I grab one of these when I'm watercoloring. And this is sort of like a bright, earthy, like I said, floral palette. And I put when I was putting these together, I wanted to decorate the outside of the tin. And I didn't really want to, to be honest, sit and paint all of them because I have six of these. <laughs> And I'd have painted two, but the rest of these, these two included, these are prints done on printer paper with my old inkjet printer. And you can see that I not only got them on here, but the ink didn't run, it didn't smear or anything like that. I'll show you the trick on how to do that right now. Um, these particular square metal tins I got from Amazon. They look like this. Here's another blank one. You can see that it's dented. I love these little square tins. However, the seller on Amazon who has them, I have gotten, I don't know how many shipments from them, all of them come dented. Every single one. I don't know if it's the way they're storing them or the way they're packing and shipping them. Although I do think that way they're packing and shipping them is an issue because they're just putting them in a bubble mailer and they're, they're, thin, they're thin metal. So they need to be in a box, but they never box them no matter what I've said. That being said, it is a cute tin, and if you don't mind the dents and taking a chance on it getting dented, I will put the link for this in the description, video description. There is a similar tin at Paper Mart. I haven't ordered any yet, um, but I may just to see what the size similarity is, because I do think I want to make some of these empty decorated tins for my Etsy shop. Um, but I need to find a supplier first that can give me ones that are indented. So I may try to order some from Paper Mart. I haven't yet. I'll give you guys the link anyway, and you guys can investigate on your own. But yeah, that's what these are from. Now you don't need to have a special tin for this. You saw this one. I turned the camera on. This is an empty Dina Wakely Scribble Sticks box. I don't even have the Scribble Sticks anymore. I forgot I had the box. I sent the Scribble Sticks off to a friend because I never used them. There, nothing wrong with scribble sticks. I just never used them. So, um, and then for a while I had watercolor in here, which is probably why I forgot about it because it was in the watercolor palette container. Um, anyway, you can use this, any metal tin will do. Um, if you're gonna use a tin like this, you might want to um, 
you know, give it a coat of paint first, but maybe you don't care if it says this on the back, but you just want the lid to be something different. So we're gonna work on that today. So I'm gonna show you what to do. So the first thing we need to do is measure the size of our tin. I get out my paper cutter. So this one is four and a half by seven and a quarter and plus an eighth, seven and three eighths. <laughs> All right, so we wanna pick a piece of paper to go on here. And I think I might use this one because I don't wanna paint the whole tin and at the same time, the colors in this would go with what's already on here. So let's do this one. Um, first, let's take off the white edge of paper. And then let's cut it to seven and three eighths. Their white edge. And then what did I say? Four and a half? <laughs> I lost track now already of what I said. Yeah, it's just a hair less than four and a half. So. Let's do four and three eighths. And then we'll test fit that to see how it fits. Needs to be just a hair shorter. That'll work. Now I'm gonna take a corner punch and I'm gonna punch the corners. This is old, an old Creative Memories Corner Punch. I've had it for so long, it still works like a champ. Okay, so then I'm gonna just, again, we're gonna test fit it. Yep. I don't want it to go all the way to the edge, which it doesn't. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my E6000. So because this is a inkjet print, you don't wanna use any anything to glue it down or seal it that's got too much water in it because the water is, keeping away from the water is the key because if you have too much water, it's gonna make the ink run. I'm going to grab something with a straight edge. Let's grab a gift card. Okay, we are going to put some E6000 on the lid here. As soon as I get it open. Okay, there we go. We're gonna run some E6000 around the edge. My E6000 getting low, I need to get some more, whoops. So I need to start using the tube squeezer to get the glue out. If you don't have one of these tube squeezers, um, they're a handy tool I can link that also in the video description. So then I'm gonna just zigzag and run some uh, across the middle. Okay, put the cap on so it doesn't leak everywhere. So now I'm gonna put this down. So I'm gonna eyeball it and get it in the middle. I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. That'll prevent too many air bubbles. Okay. 
as the glue leaks out the edges, which it's likely to do, grab it with the edge of your gift card or whatever you're using. Now smear it on the top. Then I'm gonna grab a little bit more E6000. And I'm gonna smear it all over the print. Now as you're doing this, if your paper moves around, you can, while the glue is wet, because this glue doesn't dry instantly, you can move your print around, okay? It doesn't have to be a complete um, smooth even coat, but try to get some on most of the print. And the E6000 will help seal the ink in so that it doesn't smear anywhere, right? So ideally now we're gonna let that dry completely before we go on to the next step. Um, Usually that's what I do, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to this time. It shouldn't make any difference, but well, I guess we'll find out. All right, I'll, let me get the rest of the supplies and I'll be right back. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need is some Ranger Glossy Accents in clear. Now, I don't know if other products would work with this. I have no idea. These are the ones I've tried. They're the ones I did these with, and it worked just fine. I didn't pre-sand the tin on these. I didn't um, use any other kind of glue. I only used the E6000 and then the glossy accents. Um, you should make sure it's dry, dry-ish before you do this next step. But like I said, for the sake of the video, we're not going to. I don't think it's gonna make a big difference, but yeah. So the next thing that you want to do is cover it with something to clear coat it and protect the artwork on the print on the top. And also, can you see when you do the E6000 thing that it's kind of patchy? So the, e the glossy accents will help smooth that out. Now you want to be careful not to put too much of this on because it'll just run over the edges and be all weird and just be a big mess. Let's zoom in, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm gonna start about, I don't know, a quarter inch in from the edge. Oh, after I unclog it, because it's got a clog. Let's see. It's handy also too, by the way, to have a pokey tool. Because if you get an air bubble. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Unclogged it and got the needle tool out, which got stuck. All right, so about a quarter inch or so in from the edge. I'm gonna run, start running my glossy accents. I'm not gonna worry about doing a super thick coat. And as you can see, I'm not making sure I'm not worried about making sure that there's no gaps. I'm just putting a decent amount on, but I'm not going too close to the edge. So then I'm gonna take my, again, my straight edge and I'm gonna start smoothing out the glossy accents, getting the air bubbles out and spreading it out because again, you want a thin coat. You don't want anything too thick. And you wanna go up to the edge without going over, but I have a baby wipe in my hand, so if it does go over, 
and I will catch it. And we'll also tilt it and see where it maybe needs some more. Like right there, see I spilled. So then I'll take the baby wipe and just do that. And tilt it again. Seems to be pretty good. Okay, then you let the whole thing dry uh, ideally overnight and when it is done you're going to be left with when it's completely dry something like this it's not sticky it's very durable and um, pretty at the same time and in the tin you can use it as I have to store your watercolors you could store um, pencils and pens in it you could store uh, paint brushes you could use it as a travel art supply tin Oops, let's go out the other way. Um, you could do anything, but the point is that you've repurposed a tin, you've made it pretty, you've um, decorated it with your own artwork or someone else's. These would make great gifts um, for the creatives in your life. Um, and yeah, they are a lot of fun and very easy to make. So yeah, I would love to see what you do with this and with um, the ideas the other ladies have with the digital art prints. Uh, their links are in the description below. So pretty, that one is so pretty. So I didn't think I was gonna like that one as much as I am right now, but um, yeah, anyway, I might have to keep that one. Probably not, I'll probably gift it to a friend. Uh, anyway, um, as, as it's drying or once it's dry, if you find like right here, there's a little bit that's lifting. Um, you can go back and put a little bit of glue under there and stick it down again. Ideally, that's why you want to wait. For the E6000 to dry before you put the glossy accents on is not because you're worried too much about... Um, the one needing to dry before the other one's on there. It's just because you want to make sure it's stuck down. <laughs> All right, anyway, so that's it. Have a great time with that. I'd love to see what you do. If you want to start a conversation about it, you can join my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression. I'd love to have you over there. Again, the video uh, description contains everybody else's links and the free download for the background I created. I hope you, um, download it and have fun with it. You can do so many things with it besides just your standard journal page. So I'd love to see what you do with them in your art. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Not only my channel, but the other artists uh, channel that are involved in this project and support all of them how you can and the free content they provide you on Facebook and in the, in the on Facebook, on YouTube and in the Facebook art groups. Uh, we all have ways to get support uh, for the content that we provide, including Etsy shops and Amazon affiliate links and uh, PayPal tip jars and Patreon and uh, YouTube membership. There's so many ways. I have my own set of links. They're in the video description, so check it out. If you have any questions, leave them down, or questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below in the comments below the video. Or if you are connected with me on social media somewhere, feel free to DM me the question. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget the most important thing besides go out and play and make art. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.